Hey everyone, I'm Nathan Hughes. Welcome to the Reconcile Podcast. We're so glad that you're here. We believe that God is calling all of us to a better future and to look inside and see our potential. That's really what this podcast is all about. So I'm glad that you checked this message out. Hope that you enjoy it and be encouraged. Let's all go out and reconcile the world. Welcome to our human series. In the beginning, God spoke goodness over his creation, and that includes you and that includes me. There's actually more about our humanity that unites us than divides us. We share more commonalities than we do differences. So join us as we journey on this human experience and reclaim the goodness that God spoke over us. Welcome to the human experience. If you have your phones or you want to open up your Bibles, we're going to be in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 is where we're going to, where we're going to be. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. I'll meet you guys there. I'll meet you there. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning, the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the waters, and God spoke, Let there be light. And there was day, and there was night, and it was good. God spoke goodness over his creation the first day. God spoke again and said, let there be a vault in the sky to separate water from water. So the sky was formed and it was good the second day. And then God said, let's separate the water from the dry land and let the dry land produce vegetation and plants. And then the sun and the moon and all the stars in the sky. And then living creatures, birds to fly across the sky, livestock and wild animals to move across the ground the sixth day, and God saw that it was all good. And on the sixth day, God said, let us make mankind, let us make humanity in our image, in our likeness. In the image of God, we will make them, male and female, we will make them. For a lot of my life growing up, I always had a lot of questions, I did. My mom would pray that prayer with me. You know, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. It would terrify me. I told you guys that before. So I always knew there was a God out there and I didn't want to lose my soul. I wanted to keep it, you know? I felt like if I was going to go to bed and die, my soul was going to be gone. I wanted to keep that thing. And as I got older, I started to contemplate more. I started to have more questions, started to doubt. Doubt is a good thing. If you doubt elegantly, if you doubt lazily, it's a bad thing. But if you doubt with elegance and intelligence, it's a great thing. And as I got older, I started to experience more life. I started to go to some of my favorite places. One of my favorite places on this planet is the pier at Newport Beach. And every time I go there, ever since I was a kid, I love to walk the pier and then I just look out into the ocean. Have you ever done something like that and you have this feeling that just overcomes you, you can't really explain it? This feeling that there's got to be something more out there. There's got to be more to life. There's got to be more than even what I could imagine in my own brain, right? In my own mind, there's got to be more. And then I was in my early 20s and I stumbled upon this place called the Grand Canyon. Has anybody been before? If you haven't, you need to go. You do. And you see pictures, but when you walk up, to the edge of the Grand Canyon and you look over and you feel how vast it is. You don't see how vast it is, you feel how vast it is. It does something to you, it overwhelms you. But then after the first time, you just kind of get used to it and you're like, hey, I don't need to go back to the Grand Canyon. Am I right? But it does something to you. And as you're thinking, there's, there's something bigger going on here. There's something greater going on here. And I, I have a lot of favorite places. I'm a foodie, I've got a lot of favorite foods. And some people think I get too fired up and I'm too passionate about these things, but I just really enjoy life. And it's as, it's as if all of these things that I've experienced are there to point me to something even greater. Would you agree with me? Even in an in intimate friendship relationship, oh, it just feels so good. Doesn't it feel so good to be known? Doesn't it? There's nothing like it. But all of these things are but signposts They're good things, but they're signposts pointing us to an ultimate thing. They are. 
Psalms 19 verse one says, the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim, they demonstrate the work of his hands. Scripture tells us that the purpose of creation is to display the glory of God. That's why creation's there. It's to put on display God's glory. It's to make him famous. That's what his creation is there for. It's to point everyone and everything back to the ultimate source of life. Even the best sunset isn't God's best though. Even the most beautiful beaches, even the most beautiful places, they aren't God's best. They aren't God's best. And I got in trouble for saying this, but somebody misunderstood me when I said it, but I'm gonna say it again and I stand by it. Out of all creation, out of all things that are created, you are God's best. You are God's best. I think we hear that, but we don't believe it. Out of all creation, out of the most amazing sunset, out of the, the, my, my honeymoon, I saw some amazing things. Some amazing things. Let me tell you, Green Sands Beach blew me away. It's as if that beach was created just for me. Guys, I see your minds. I did see some amazing things. We're not gonna go there, all right? <laughs> it's so great being married because you can make jokes like that. It's awesome. But I saw some amazing things. And every time I see these amazing things, I'm just blown away. But then I'm reminded the most amazing thing that God created, it was me and it was you. And I think something has happened to us in this created order that has caused us to forget that. And we're gonna get there in this series. Remember, this is human session one. And I'm here to set the stage. I can't stand preachers that wanna hit you over the head with their Bible and tell you, you're going to hell, you're a sinner. It's like, hold, hold up, but what happened before I sinned? God spoke goodness over, over you. That's what he did. He spoke goodness over you. And we're gonna get to the sin part, trust me, we have to, it's inevitable. But I don't need anybody to tell me I'm a sinner, right? I know that. I find that out all on my own, every single day of my life. But you know what I need people to remind me of? that I'm God's best. Genesis chapter one, verse 26, it says, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created humanity in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Nothing else bears the image of God like a human life does. Nothing else. Nothing else has dominion over all creation like that of a human life. Nothing else. Nothing else is called to steward not only your life, to leverage your life, to be a good steward of your life and over all of creation like that of a human life is. There's something different about a human life. And you know what? I had a hard time believing this. Absolutely nothing can take that away from you. Absolutely nothing can take away your God-given worth as a human being. Even after you sinned, even if you think about the most heinous act that's ever been committed, I wanna believe otherwise, but nothing can take away the worth and the value of a human life, nothing. Nothing. Nothing can take away that worth and that value from you. But here's the problem. A lot of us don't know how valuable we are and a lot of us don't know how priceless we are because many of us, especially out in the world, don't know who God is. And if we don't know who God is, how are we gonna know all of these amazing things about creation? We're not. It's impossible to know who you are and why you're here if you don't know first who God is. Because God is our ultimate point of reference. It's by Him that we see everything else clearly. 
C.S. Lewis, he has this amazing quote. He said, I believe in God like I believe in the sun. Not only because I see the sun, but because by the sun, I see everything else. I believe in God like I believe in the sun. Not only because I see the sun, but because by the sun, I see everything else. Yeah. And I'm telling you, you guys go there with me, like follow, follow this with me. If God is not our ultimate reference point, are you ever gonna see yourself clearly? You're not. And there's a lot of great things about you, some things that nothing else can take away, but we're gonna get to it in session two and session three of human. There's some things that we need to address, but first let's just start with our goodness. And our goodness, the only reason we are good is because of God, that's it. He's our ultimate point of reference. And we're never gonna be able to see ourselves clearly if we don't first look to God. We've gotta look to God, we've gotta look to his word, we've gotta look to people that are gonna point us closer to his presence. We have to. Because if we don't, we're gonna look to ourselves. And many of you know my story, my life is surrounded by people immediate family members that looked to their self as the ultimate reference point. And you know what happens? A lot of lesser loves grab a hold of our heart. We run to the world for our value and for our approval and for our significance. And so my family, they fell to a lot of drug addictions. My mom basically lost her life because of her drug addiction. She's been in a convalescent home for 13 years. But I've seen how broken my family had, ha has become because they looked to themselves and they didn't look to God. We must look to God. We will never know who we are if we keep looking only to ourselves. Saint Irenaeus, he's an early church father. And before I get to his quote, what, what was the purpose of creation again? Come on, you're in seminary tonight to reflect God. What was that verse, Psalm 19, one? To display and declare his glory. It's to put God's glory on demonstration for all to see. That's creation's job, that's creation's responsibility. And I love this, I never, I never heard this, it was like this, two years ago I heard this and it rocked me. How do we as human beings bring God the most glory? How? Check this out, St. Irenaeus, early church father. He says, the glory of God is humanity fully alive. The glory of God, you know how you make God famous? You know how you put his glory on demonstration? You live fully alive. And in the scriptures in John 10, 10, what does it say that Jesus came to do? He says, there's an enemy that comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but he says, I come that you may have life. And not just life, life what? To the full. Jesus came to make us fully alive. And here's the problem. Tonight, I want a good response time, so we're gonna try to keep it moving quickly, but here's the problem. This is what happens in our world. You guys gotta work with me on this illustration, all right? I promise you, last time I did this illustration, I was at a church and they had this massive spotlight and it worked perfectly. It's not gonna work as good tonight, but I just want you to go there with me mentally, okay? Slide this over. Point it at me, right there. So here is what the world tells us to do. The world tells us not to look to God. What does the world tell us to do? That's right, look to ourselves. And what happens when I'm constantly looking to myself? Can't see anything else. And it, it, we can talk after if, you don't, if you're not on this, if you don't believe this, but just look to our world, right? What, is, what do celebrities tell us to do? What does Hollywood tell us to do? What does Instagram tell us to do? Look to ourselves. And what do you see when you look to yourself? You see, dang, I'm pretty handsome. Man, shirt's a little small, but it's all right, I've been hitting the gym. Hold up, are those wrinkles underneath my eyes? 
I know I just turned 30 this year, but my gosh, I'm looking old. Is that a pimples on my face? Blackheads on my nose? Wow, little gray hairs on my head? You know what happens when we get consumed with ourselves? We start to become anxious. Anxiety starts to fill our hearts and our minds. We start to, we start to chase the approval of others, right? We're consumed by ourselves. And what happens when we stop looking at ourselves? We start looking to God. You start to see yourself clearly, right? You don't have to put the weight of other people's opinions over you. And there's something miraculous that starts to happen when you start to look to God and his word. You start to reflect a different image. And I'm telling you, this, this was like home run, hit it out of the park. It's not gonna do it right tonight. But you start to reflect a different image. And if you didn't notice, this world is a really dark place. What does this world need more than anything else? It needs us to get our eyes off of ourselves. And when we start to look to God, we start to reflect a different image. Because we're image bearers, we carry the image of God. And when we start to look to God, we start to light up a broken world. And there was this massive spotlight coming down on this mirror and it was hitting everybody in the face and it was blinding them. Emma, are you pretty blind right now? And you know what it does? When you start to look to God, you start to show other people who they are supposed to be, who they were created to be, who they've always been. I'm telling you, I'm just sorry the off factor wasn't really there tonight, but I'm telling you, how are people going to know how priceless they are if there's nobody there to tell them? And I said something similar last week. We are image bearers. What does it mean to bear something? It means to carry something. We carry God's image. And when we carry it and when we look to God, we start to reflect his image out into the world. It's as if this mirror is pointed to heaven. Heaven catches the reflection and it shines out into all creation. And that's what our lives are supposed to do. And the more alive we become, the more that that happens. I wrote down on my notes, I said, the more we worship the right thing, the more alive we become. The more alive we become, the more glory God gets. The more we worship the right thing, the more alive we become. You want your your friendship relationships to flourish, you want your intimate relationships to flourish, you want just your overall well-being to flourish, you gotta start worshiping the right thing. And we all are guilty of even worshiping ourselves. We are. I mean, how can we not? Look at the world that we live in. It's insane. But the more that we worship the right thing, the more alive we will become. And that's why we come to church on Tuesday nights. That's why we come to church on Sundays. That's why we are the church when we leave the church building. That's what it means to be called out. You know that word church, it means called out. Not like the rest of the world, you're called out. What it means to be holy, it means to be set apart. There's something about you that looks different. What is that? It's church, it's God, it's Jesus. He honestly saved my life. He changed the trajectory of my family forever, forever. The more we worship the right things, the more alive we become. The more alive we become, the more glory God gets. I wanna ask the worship team to come back up. And now we're getting ready to enter into our time of response. And I don't want you guys to feel anxious about this. Stop, if there's anxiety in your heart, recognize it. It might not go away, but you don't have to do anything that God isn't calling you to do. You see what I did there right now? You don't have to do anything that God isn't calling you to do. And I just wanna ask for some of my friends to just come up here just for you to be praying by yourself. But if there's anybody that wants prayer and you wanna be reminded that you are God's best, 
and you've been struggling maybe with some self-image, come get some prayer. I'm telling you, it'll change your night, if not change your life. If you wanna sit there and journal about how God was speaking to you through the message, sit there and journal about how God was speaking to you through the message. If you just wanna sit there and contemplate prayer, do nothing, do nothing, that's fine. God will meet you in that space. But we're gonna sing one last song and this is our response time. And you respond however it is that God is calling you to respond. And this is just the beginning. Please, you guys, I know school's starting back up, but for the next three weeks now, if you can, make it back here for sessions two, three, and four. Because I truly believe this, this human series. I feel like there's some pastors out there that if they knew I was preaching a series called Human, they'd be like, what kind of heresy is that? What kind of pastor are you talking about humans? You talk about God. Well, guess what? We're gonna talk a lot about God. He created humans, so. <laughs> I'm gonna pray for us, and I'm gonna pray for all of us to respond however we need to. And then after that, we're gonna hang out. Please eat some more donuts, play some games, enjoy some human connection. Let's pray. God, we come before you right now humbly. We started this service on our knees, and now our hearts are open and we're ready to receive whatever it is you have for us, God. Maybe some of us in the room know that we have been, haven't been reflecting your image, God, that we haven't been worshiping the right thing. And for those people, I would just pray right now in this moment that you remind them that you've got them exactly where you want them. Maybe there's people in this room that have been struggling with self-image, God. And we feel broken by the weight that we've been trying to carry of other people's standards and other people's opinion and other people's comments and other people's criticisms, God. Just remind them right now that there's, there's nothing that can take away our worth and our innate value as a human being created in your image. There's nothing that we can do. There's nothing that we have done. There's nothing that we will do that can take that away from us because you gave it to us. And yes, you're restoring that in us. You're making us more alive. And so that's my prayer tonight, God, that we would become so fully alive that people would see us and they'd say, what is that about you? I want what you have. We pray that right now, but we have to respond, God. We have to move in faith. We've got to trust. Without faith, it's impossible to please you, God. And it pleases you when you see your creation becoming fully alive. And so right now, I pray that you would meet us in this place. Fill our hearts with your love and your truth, God, not the world's lies. And we pray that in your precious name, Jesus. Amen.